Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about culture, interviews and red flags. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what should we look out for in the interviewing stage that may indicate that a company has a bad engineering culture? And the short answer is there is a complete lack of, there's a lack of engineering or engineer, let's call it engineering luxuries. That's number one. And number two is the company is primarily focused on sales. Let me explain. So the reason, you, well, there's not that many companies out there who seem to understand that one of the main reasons as to why some companies such as say Google basically around the world in of IT and everything that is related to IT is because they have realized that there has to be a balance if you if you are selling technical prod products if you're selling IT products and you don't care about good engineering practices you that is the equivalent of you selling cheap shit cheap materials. It's the same thing as trying being a car manufacturer who doesn't care about your car. You're basically just trying to sell really shitty cars. And the best car manufacturers and the best car brands in the world, they don't have this mindset. They realize that, oh, this is our product. This is the thing that this is our lifeblood. This is the thing that we're going to sell in order to make the money. So we may have to make sure that we spend at least enough time on it to make sure that it works correctly and then we can put things into sales. But the really shitty companies when it comes to IT, they usually don't have this understanding. They focus primarily on sales and I'm very sorry to say that I've worked in such a company more than once. And you will notice this very quickly in the interviewing stage because you will notice that there is well, you, you, can, you can infer it from the type of company you're dealing with. If you are working, if you're dealing with, I don't know, an insurance company, if you're dealing with an automotive company, if you're dealing with a, I don't know, a, I don't know, a ticket, re, like a reseller of some sort or something like that. If you're dealing with something that is very, uh, that is not inherently connected directly to technology or IT, if you're not dealing with a company who is a, what I call a true, or what's called a true IT company and a true, like a real IT company, they have a digital product of some sort. They have a digital product, product where the quality of that product is the thing that dictates how much money they are making. This is an example. This is Facebook. This is Google. This is Netflix. All of these things, like all of these big famous companies have a digital product where the quality of that platform is the thing that is making them money. Nobody would even know about Google today if they didn't have a search engine. Then that search engine, it's not something you don't pay for the search engine. They steal your data instead or use ad ads and stuff like that to make their money. So that search engine, that has to be a fucking good search engine, and it is, if we're honest here, but to, in order for them to make money. And that means that this is the thing, that this is, the, they have that focus. But if you go to, I don't know, General Motors or Ford, or you go to Volvo or whichever car company, they're not making money necessarily from their digital products. They are selling cars. They have digital systems, but they will, quote unquote, still sell cars, even if they have really shitty systems. That mindset, it's not true because, and this is a different video, but it is true to a point I would say, every company today is a digital company or every company today should be an IT company because that's the this is the trend that we are seeing in the world. People are, if you wanna reach people, ads, uh, ad, ad, ads in papers and st stuff of this nature, that's a dying, field, it's a dying industry, but we are just getting more and more people onto the internet. So there is a truth to, uh, there is a balancing act here. And you, as I said, that's the, f that's the first indicator. This doesn't always have to be true. I've seen some truly technological, amazing things happen in, co in, in organizations where you would have never, I would have never expected this to happen. I remember one of the most inspiring TikToks I've ever seen was from here in Sweden, actually, 
from the the pension fund or the, the um, there's a branch of the government who handles people's pension here they had some of the most advanced ideas that i've ever seen for doing regression testing and end-to-end -end testing absolutely amazing work and they were using a map they were they were using kubernetes and i think the spring framework and stuff like that they were on a modern stack right but that's the first indicator the second part is much broader and that's the thing that i called social luxuries or engineering luxuries now what the hell is that well it's very simple there are things guys that you may think are just a given and a given for an engineer who hasn't worked is usually that oh you do unit testing. Oh, you have code reviews. Oh, you have coworkers or collaboration or pair programming or things like that. Guys, this is, these are luxuries. These are definitely not things that you can chalk down as, oh, this is just as having an editor. Having an editor or like a, some way of writing code, that's a, that's a hard requirement for being able to work as a programmer. But the things that I've just no, mentioned to you, these things, and I'll add one more, which is having the ability to have an opinion on the work that you do. These things are luxuries. The company has no obligation to give you this at all. And you will notice that depend, well, if you're lucky, you will get into an, a real IT company or a company where they have these things. And that's the thing that you need to keep be aware of. These sorts of things only the companies who actually care to some measure about their engineers will have these things. So a red flag for you is going to be that, oh, you're, you, and this is usually, I'm sorry to say, what happens if you go and work for a consultancy or similar sorts of organizations where, oh, no, everybody works on their own project. You have no collaboration at whatsoever, which means that if you're working alone, you don't have real code reviews or anything like that, and you don't have any ability to do pair programming or anything like that or knowledge share, et cetera, et cetera. Usually a very strong indicator is that you're going to work alone on a project. That is a very strong indicator that this is not going to be a good place for you to, to develop your engineering skills. But there are also other things around it where, you know, you, as I was saying, like they may not have a culture around code review. So if you ask, okay, do you do any pair programming or do they, do you do any type of code reviews or anything like that? Some really, really, really thick, recruiter or interviewer or representative that you have to do uh, deal with in the company may be honest enough to say that no we don't really do that and I mean that's that could be a good thing and it can also be a really bad thing because that person may just be so out of it out of the loop of software development that they don't actually realize that these things actually do matter and that, that that's also a really big red flag so if they actually tell you that they don't do this this should be like all the red flags should go off now so you're working in, in the worst case scenario now, you're working in a most, uh, in a, let's call it a smallish company where the people who have all the power are all business people and they only focus on selling things as quickly as possible, which me, and they have no practices regarding quality of software or engineering practices. Well, that basically spells that, oh, everything's gonna be a hack and if the code base is most likely ugly as fuck. It's code that not even the the code's mother would love like it's it's the it's the worst type of situation because this sort of in especially if it's a smaller company or well it can of course for, for a big company as well but it, it, then they have like short deadlines every single day and they're going to just hack things together most likely these are very very strong indicators that something this is not a good engineering culture or engineering place to to learn engineering so what i want you to take away from this is that if you're looking for red flags it's sometimes very hard to figure out if this is going to be a good or bad company for from an engineering perspective the usual suspects is number one this is not an it company it's a company that has some they have systems they have digital products that they use in order to sell something or some other like they have another another focus when it's coming to selling things 
companies such as Google, they sell digital products. They make money from the quality of their software and the quality of their products. But a company such as, I don't know, a clothing store or like a chain who sell a reseller of some sort, they may have a different perspective because they believe that, oh, it's not the quality of our digital product that makes us money. It is the quality of the physical good that we are selling. This is usually a warning flag. Not always, but quite a lot and quite often. And the second warning flag is going to be, do they have any luxuries, engineering luxuries, such as code reviews, pair programming, postmortems? Do they do knowledge sharing? Do they have any like small community where they try to learn from each other? Things like that. Everything, things that are happening in a healthy IT company, if they don't have these sorts of things, then it's very likely that that company is all about trying to ship on the shortest deadlines. The system is most likely going to be absolute shit because even the really good companies that do this well have shitty systems. Then you can imagine how war how horrible the companies, uh, the c code of the companies who don't care about this stuff actually is. So these are the things that usually will give you a strong indicator if this is a good or bad company for an engineer to work in. Have a great day.